Hi everybody, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Taylor series. So Taylor's theorem states that uh, any continuous function can be approximated by an infinite series. And that infinite series is of course the Taylor series. So let's say we have a function. We'll draw a graph of this function here. So we have this function and we choose uh, two x values for the function. So we'll choose an x value, x sub i, and then some other x value, x sub i plus 1. The distance between those values is going to be uh, x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i. And eventually we're going to call that h, that separation distance. Now, each of these x values has a corresponding y value, which we will call f of x sub i and f of x sub i plus 1. Now, the Taylor series, we're going to use this to approximate the value at f of x sub i plus 1. Um, we're going to use that, uh, we're going to do that using information based on f of x sub i. So, for a first approximation, according to the Taylor series, what we're going to do is this. We're going to say that our f of x sub i plus 1 value is equal to, and at a first approximation, we're going to just say that it's equal to f of x sub i. Now, obviously, looking at this graph, that's not accurate, but it's a good start with the Taylor series. So the way the Taylor series works is we take this approximation and then we refine it by adding more terms to this infinite series. So we'll add another term here. The next term is going to be the derivative f prime of x sub i multiplied by that separation distance x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i, or we'll just call it h to keep things neat on our canvas here. Now when we do that, now we have a somewhat better approximation because now we're including, uh, in addition to just f of x sub i, we're also including the slope of the function at that location. So originally, our first approximation just states that f of x sub i plus 1 is equal to f of x sub i and would look like this. Now that we're including the slope in our approximation, now our approximation looks a little more like that. That immediately gets closer to the, um, the function that we're looking for. So we can keep refining this by adding additional terms to our Taylor series. So we add more terms of the Taylor series. The next term is going to be the second derivative term, f double prime of x sub i, again multiplied by h, but this time h is going to be squared. And then we're going to divide this entire term by 2 factorial, which turns out is 2. When we do that, now we're going to get, again, a more refined estimate of f of x sub i plus 1. And we can keep doing this, we can keep adding terms. We can add the third derivative, f of x sub i, divided by now 3 factorial, and multiplied by h cubed. So you can maybe start seeing the pattern here, that each time we add a term, we multiply it by h raised to that term's power, and divide by that term factorial. So our fourth derivative, times h to the fourth power, divided by 4 factorial. Our fifth term, etc. We'll add a little dot, dot, dot here. This will go on forever, basically. But this is an approximation. So when I use this equal sign, I should really include a little tilde over it to uh, indicate that this is, this is an approximate value. We'll go out to however many terms we want to go out to, and we'll have, you know, to the nth term, the nth derivative of f of x sub i multiplied by h to the n power divided by n factorial. Now, if we take this all the way out to infinity, then this is no longer an approximation. If we go out to an infinite number of terms, so we'll do another dot, dot, dot here, we got to an infinite number of terms, we take the 
infinite derivative of f of x sub i multiplied by h to the infinity power divided by infinity factorial. Now we have a true equality. So this is no longer an approximation when we go all the way out to infinity. Now obviously we're not going to go all the way out to infinity. That's too many terms for any mere human to deal with. So what we're going to do is eventually we're going to decide that we have had enough terms and we're going to cut off the rest of the terms. So the terms that we cut off, or a better term for that is called truncation, if we cut off any number of terms here, so let's say we cut off everything after the fourth, or everything after the third derivative term. So we're going to take all these terms here and we're going to cut those off. So when those go away, we're left with the following. Now, this is still an approximate equality. So this is still a Taylor series approximation. If we want this to be a true equality, then we need to add one more term to it. And that term is called the truncation error. When we add the truncation error, that turns our Taylor series into a true equality. The truncation error is a term that contains all Taylor series terms that we have not included in the Taylor series that we've written out here. Now, we can make things a little bit easier with this Taylor series if we uh, change a few things about our terminology. So let's go back to our plot here. We chose two x values. We chose x sub i and x sub i plus 1. If we decide that our x sub i value is at zero, this is going to end up making things a lot easier. So let's uh, redraw our function here, and we'll choose x sub i to be at x equals zero. So this is our x sub i value now, zero. Then we choose one other x value. Let's put our function on here. So we choose one other x value here, but instead of needing to call this x sub i plus one or anything like that, we just need to call this x. Then the separation distance between 0 and x is equal to x, right? So x minus 0 equals x. Hopefully I didn't need to tell you that. So now we have uh, f of x values still corresponding to both of these two x values. So the first one is going to be our f of 0 value. And then the second one was, is going to be our f of x value. So this is f of x. This is f of 0. Now when we write out our Taylor series, we have a far more simplified version of the system. So now, f of x, this used to be f of x sub i plus 1. Now it's just f of x because it's the only x we're really interested in now. It's going to be equal to f of 0 plus the derivative f prime at 0 multiplied by our separation distance, which is x plus our second derivative at x equals 0, multiplied by x squared, divided by 2 factorial, plus f triple prime of 0, times x cubed, divided by 3 factorial, etc., out to however many number of terms we intend to use. And if we include a truncation error, then this is an exact equality. Now, using this form of our Taylor series, I'm going to take a moment here to kind of demonstrate that this is valid for a continuous function. So the continuous function we're going to use here 
is we are going to, first we're going to try this with just a straight line. So we'll approximate our straight line based on this Taylor series, and then we'll do it again for a quadratic. So a straight line, something like y equals 3x plus 4. Okay, so we want to approximate this series. So our function here is 3x plus 4. We're going to plug in 0 into this function, and we'll see kind of what we turn out by plugging this into our Taylor series. So the first term, so when we go into the Taylor series, our first term, so we have f of x can be equal to f of 0. So this is going to be 3 times 0 plus 4 which is equal to, of course, 4. So that's our first term. Now we go to the second term, where we take the first derivative of our function. So the derivative of 3x plus 4 is simply 3. And then we're going to, so the derivative at 0 is also 3, because it's 3 everywhere. Then we multiply 3 by x. So we're going to get plus 3x. Now we're going to take the second derivative of 3x plus 4, which is zero. So the uh, second derivative term here just goes to zero. That becomes a zero. Also the third derivative term and any subsequent term in this Taylor series is going to end up being zero all the way out to any infinite number of terms. So the non-zero parts that we've come up with here, 4 plus 3x, well that is our original function. So plugging this into the Taylor series we were able to uh, redevelop our original function. As a second example, let's do this for a quadratic. So our quadratic is going to be y equals x squared plus 4x minus 3. Okay. The derivative of that, call this y prime, 2x plus 4. Second derivative is 2 third derivative is 0, and all subsequent derivatives are also going to be 0. So if we start plugging these in here, we can start redeveloping this function. So for the first term, we're going to plug in 0 into our original y function here. So f of 0 is going to be uh, 0 plus 0 minus 3. So our first approximation here f of x equals negative 3. Now we're going to go to the first derivative term. We're going to plug in 0. So 2x plus 4, we plug in 0. That's going to be 0 plus 4. And then we multiply it by x. So uh, 0 plus 4 multiplied by x is going to be 4x. So plus 4x. Now we go to the second derivative term, where our derivative is 2. No matter what we plug in there, f of 0 will be 2. So we multiply 2, multiply by x squared, and then divide it by 2 factorial, which is 2. So that gives us plus x squared. Now we can go to our third derivative term, which is 0. The entire term gets multiplied by 0. We add 0. If we do this for subsequent derivatives, they're all going to be plus 0. So again, it's in reverse order of the terms, but we end up with the same terms that we had in our original uh, y equals x squared plus 4x minus 3. So even simple functions like uh, a straight line and a parabola can be approximated with a Taylor series. In fact, these simple functions, you can use a Taylor series to get an exact, uh, a pro or an exact equality with these functions. So now if we apply this Taylor series to a more complicated function, we can really start to see its value here. So particularly using it where x sub i is equal to 0, this becomes, becomes very handy for a function like uh, y equals e to the x. So if we have y equals e to the x, we can find its derivative. So the derivative, y prime, is equal to e to the x. Second derivative, 
equal to e to the x. Maybe you're seeing a pattern. This is a convenient function for this. So we can start approximating this in terms of a Taylor series as well. So here's how the Taylor series for e to the x would look. f of x would be equal to first uh, f of 0, so e to the 0 power, which is 1. The second term would be the derivative, e to the x, so e to the 0 power, then multiplied by x. So that's 1 times x. The next term would be e to the 0 power, which is 1. That's our second derivative, multiplied by x squared, and then divided by 2 factorial. So x squared over 2 factorial, which is, of course, 2. For the next term, the third derivative, which is e to the x, of course, e to the 0 power is 0, multiplied by x cubed, divided by 3 factorial. I'll write out a few more of the terms here. We include our truncation error, and then this becomes an exact equality. So that's a little primer on how the Taylor series is assembled.